Hi guys, happy Friday. I know that I can't be with you in class today, but I did want to finish explaining this, um, my Kinsman Major Molino short story close reading because you have pretty much two choices for things that you can work on in class today. The first is please don't forget Monday, we have our test over the awakening. So it might be in your best interest to read or finish reading the book. Um, and then your other assignment is this short story close reading that we talked about in class yesterday. So if you open up your assignment, this is the one that I basically told you the reason we're doing it is because it's going to help you develop that skill for the AP test where you need to be able to look at, oh, all these spelling errors, where you need to be able to look at um, a passage and do more than just summarize it. So when in doubt um, for future, because I'm going to ask you, I'm going to show you my sample one, the first reading, and then I'm going to ask you to do your own for the second reading. Um, when in doubt, look back up at this list. This is what you need to do. You need to read the passage. You need to make sure first thing you do is ask yourself what is happening. Second thing is explain what is the purpose. And then start to look closely at things like I've listed here. Word choice, sentence structure, style, punctuation, tone, organization, and different literary devices. When you're all done looking at those um, individual parts, I want you to think about and then write about what are the effects of the choices that the writer makes. Now, because these directions can be a little vague, um, we talked about the first passage yesterday together. On this assignment sheet, I also gave you a second passage that you can use from my Kinsman Major Molino. If you have one that you would like to use instead, feel free to copy or get rid of this, highlight it and, and delete. Um, but in case you didn't know, like a good place where you could do your second close reading because you're required to do two for this short story, um, you can use the one that I have listed on here. So I'm gonna flip over to my sample one and that way you kind of have this in case you need it. But this was the one that I did for the part of my Kinsman Major Molino that we talked about yesterday. So you can see here on the side um, that I have all of these different annotations. Now you don't have to have these, but um, just so you realize this is what I would do for a close reading. So the first thing I did was I broke up the sentences. If we're looking at the syntax, I can see that there's not a lot of variation. Nathaniel Hawthorne tends to write in long descriptive sentences, but that's still something that I'm noticing here in this close reading. All of these sentences, uh, aside from the third one, um, they really take up, you know, at least three lines of space. Um, all right, so I noted that the setting is referred to um, a few times. They talk about how his journey is beginning at night. He arrives in this new town at nine o'clock. They mention that it's an unusual hour. So in a close reading, I might say that the unusual hour and the nightfall indicate that it's odd that his journey is beginning at this time. Maybe that makes it like a dark purpose. Uh, the other thing that we pointed out and that the American gloom criticism helped us see was that there are two different lights that are referred to throughout the story. And since this is the beginning, um, we're paying attention to the repetition of light. The two different types of light are moonlight and lantern light. And they talked about how things in the moonlight are like a little bit more like it's got that soft glow. So maybe it's like that whole dreamlike state, whereas like lamp light or lantern light, um, these quote unquote like man-made lights, um, these are things that offer a look at things as they really are, not like as they, you know, are fantasized or idealized to be. Um, I also noted because the order of details becomes important. If you don't know what else you're looking for, look at how things are arranged. In this passage, the order of details, the first thing we find out about this guy, when the stranger holds up the lantern to survey him or to figure out, you know, like, who is this person, is that he's young. He was a youth of barely 18 years. So his youth is the first thing that's highlighted. I would start to think in a close reading, youth has to do with being naive, um, not even just naive, but like it could mean innocence. You're not tainted by the world yet. Maybe you're a little bit gullible. Maybe you're oblivious or unaware of certain things. Um, and that's reinforced by mentioning it's his first visit to town. In other words, like he's green, he's a newbie. Uh, the next thing um, that we get in his description is all about what he's wearing. And there's a couple different things I might notice in a close reading. Um, all of his clothes are very durable or coarse or they've been in excellent repair. So these are things that last. And this is going to help contrast the different people that he meets later on that are dressed much nicer than he is. Um, it also kind of outwardly sets him apart. It makes us know that he is an outsider. 
It also allows us to see some of his past because they mentioned that these were things maybe made by a mother or a sister or a father might have worn before. Um, so we might start to infer that here's a kid coming from a home where he was loved or he was taken care of. This next detail we're given is uh, the introduction of this symbol, the oak sapling. An oak sapling, an oak is like a hard type of wood and a sapling is a young tree. So not only is this oak sapling like a symbol of his home, but maybe it's a symbol of him, Robin, right? He is this young, strong tree, quote unquote, out in the world now. Um, and he is, uh, you know, clinging to his roots or he's clinging to this idea of his home, um, this hardened root as protection in this scary new place. Um, I also noted that, oh, I can't see down here because this weird little box, let me close it. Um, maybe the fact that they call it a hardened root is that, you know, a place he's no longer welcome. Uh, and so these are the things that I, I noticed. Um, the highlighted in blue, these are the different physical descriptions of him. He's obviously a strong kid. Um, so yeah, so that's my close reading. So going back up to my um, directions as far as what are the things that I should write about, I'll zoom in for this part here so that you can see this is my sample passage. And yes, I will know if you legitimately just copy and paste what I write, but I'm okay if you use a lot of the same wording that I do because I'm trying to help you out for this first one. So I have first in this passage, the setting allows the reader to know the time of night and more attention is paid to characterizing the appearance of Robin, making him more important than the setting or the purpose or the conflict of the story. All right, so just for ease of you, you guys can put this all together in one paragraph, but I will say just for ease of understanding, that's me saying this is what's happening. The next part I have to write about is what's the purpose of the passage. Okay, so here we go. The purpose of this passage is the third person narrator's description gives us an unbiased view of how this person will be perceived as a stranger alone on his first visit to town. Notice how I include those embedded quotes. Um, that's a good thing to start getting used to in this, you know, really easy kind of writing activity. The longest part is going to be writing about what you notice in the text because I want you to be specific. So I list here the word choice and syntax stand out as the primary descriptors of the writer's style. Sophisticated, carefully selected words help to paint a picture of this young man, but also to establish an unemotional tone. There are few words describing his mindset and more about his outward appearance. The serviceable and well-shaped limbs, that's an embedded quote, and vigorous shoulders and bright, cheerful eyes help readers understand that while this boy is young and alone, he is capable of taking care of himself and he seems unbothered by his current state. That would be not having a lot of money. Additionally, the addition of the description of the oak cudgel, a possible symbol for the boy himself, helps us to gain an understanding of his situation. He is still clinging to his hardened roots and he himself is a sapling as it appears. It is his first visit to town. There is also a modifier in the way the passage introduces two types of light, lamplight and moonlight, which could suggest things aren't seen clearly, and both types of light would create a soft image, not offering the most clear view. So the last part that I have to add is, what is the effect of the writer's choices? So I might put something as simple as, the writer's detailed description of the boy and the detached narrator, because it's third person, allows us to understand the outward characterization of Robin without a lot of emotional attachment. And what do I mean by that? Well, Here's a kid, oh, he's all alone, oh, he left home. But because the fact of the way that his description reads, um, for me personally, I don't feel bad for him. I don't feel pity for him. I don't feel sorry for him. So even though I put this out into four bullet points, you don't have to do that. But I wanted you guys to be aware, this is how you would compose a close reading. So please do this close reading for the first one. So do it on your own assignment sheet. You need to type here. And then you can either use the second example that I gave you, or you can find your own. But I'm gonna ask you to have your close reading for my Kinsman Major Molyneux. Um, you need to be keeping up with that. So the first one should be done by the end of class. 
Um, and I, in fact, I'll probably check. Uh, the second one should be done, um, if not by Monday, then by Tuesday. Okay.